Good afternoon. I'm Betsy Pugate Joyner, and I'm sitting inside the Red Gill Fish House, which has become the Gasparilla Island Maritime Museum. A little history about the Red Gill Fish House that was written by Winnie Smart after interviewing Sam Whidden's daughters, Isabel and Barbara. Uh, the Red Gill Fish House was this structure at the end of Whidden's dock, before the dock was there. It was the only structure here, and it was owned originally by Kingsmore Johnson and it was close to the Crown and Shield Boathouse. Sam Whidden, as a young man, after returning from the war in 1917, started working um, in Boca Grande. He was born and raised in, uh, until he was 18 in Grove City. He was born in 1900, then he went off to war. When he came back, he realized that it was a very prosperous town to be in Boca Grande, and he was an avid fisherman and a hunter and he landed one of the best jobs around at that time with Louise and Frank Crown and Shield. They were um, entrepreneurs in Boca Grande. They were, came in, they loved to fish and they loved to hunt. And with uh, Sam's knowledge of hunting, the Crown and Shields leased a huge lot of land in Grove City area to raise uh, quail and doves. And Raymond Conway actually was hired to raise the quail that they hunted. Sam decided not to only be the fishing captain, but he also was their hunting captain. He was a great fisherman. He took many, many people, and the Crown Initials introduced him to a whole world of very interesting people. At that time, during that time, he was working with Sid Catlett over here at the Red Gill Fish House, too, and uh, he asked could he lease the property. And, and he was working with Kingsmore Johnson through Sid Catlett, and that in the 20, late 20s, Joe Spadaro came to the island and built the Boca Grande Hotel. And at that time, Joe bought all the property on, from East Railroad area, the Boca Grande to First Street where the Boca Grande Hotel was. And Sam said, could I buy the Red Gill Fish House? Well, Joe Spadaro leased it to him with, for $500 and a handshake. And that's the way the story goes. Um, after Joe, he never would sell it to him, but after Joe Spadaro died, uh, Sam Whidden was able to buy the fish house from the family. Um, he married the love of his life, Leslie, in 1933, and she only lived for seven years. She had a very rare, rare disease, but between the two of them, he hand built the addition of Widden's Marina to the, Gil the Red Gill Fish House. He hand built it. He was very particular about the way he built things. He, no nails were used. It was only bolts and it had to be bolts. And according to Sid Catlett and some of the other recollections in this book, it says that he also was, it was an eighth of an inch. It couldn't be a quarter of an inch. It couldn't be three quarters of an inch. It couldn't be one hair off of an eighth of an inch. He was very precise. And I was fortunate to know Captain Sam uh, as a young girl when I was about 15 to his passing. And I was very terrified of him to begin with, as most of us were. Um, he had become more of a recluse inside the marina. Um, he, he was a great man, though. The stories that his daughters, Barbara and, Les and Isabel, tell are of his great sense of humor and loving care that he took with them. But he never got all over the loss of his wife. Um, Isabel and Barbara continued to be part of the marina and Louise Cranenshield took them under her wing as young girls. Isabel was only seven at the time and they seemed to be, he had nannies, hired nannies for them and they spent a lot of time at Mrs. Cranenshield's house. Uh, Isabel tells stories about they had to run and climb up the trees to get away from the dogs and then the help would have to come get them out of the tree to take them in to see Mrs. Cranenshield. They would run upstairs and they would tell her stories and she certainly took care of them well. She did send them away to a parochial school in Tampa and both girls were there until high school. They were very lonesome and very sad that they couldn't be in Boca Grande and wanted to be back home because they were separated of their age. They weren't together. So they did be able to come back home. They lived on Tarpon Street and in the meantime Sam had uh, eventually he had moved built a home. He built a five-bedroom house here at Widden's Arena where he housed his family. He and his wife Leslie started a 
um, a restaurant, they had a dance hall, a pool hall. Uh, it was quite the prosperous uh, area in town and the place where everyone came during the war in the 40s. It was uh, all ages, all walks of life, the people from the beachfront, fishermen, the servicemen, all came to dance in the dance hall and they always made sure there was lots of food available. And since that time, the uh, Widdens has prospered, the marina has grown, uh, grandchildren, three generations, and now we've got four and five generations coming of the uh, Widden, Coleman, Joyner family. Uh, Isabel's children and grandchildren are here, and they're actually fishing captains, uh, working, selling crabs, catching fish, doing exactly what Sam Widden did in his day. Um, we are working very hard to continue that legacy through the Gasparilla Island Maritime Museum. And I'm going to let William Woodruff, our president of the museum, speak now. Hi, I'm William Woodruff, the president of the Gasparilla Island Maritime Museum. We just want to welcome you to this great spot that was once the Red Gill Fish House and the original piece that was what now Widdens Marina. We've been talking about what the mission statement of the museum is and I think that's the most important thing to, to think of. And the mission statement is to preserve the heritage, the history, and all of the things that make up the maritime industry that was here in Boca Grande. Not just commercial fishing but tarpon fishing, the guiding of all of the, the guests that came to the hotels, and just what it meant to Boca Grande in general. The not only preserving the history of it through what you'll see in this museum, but also the people of it the, and how we all get together, whether it's through the tarpon tournaments or through family dinners on the dock. There's so much that goes on here at the marina and at the Gasper Island Maritime Museum through the history of the Red Gill Fish House. Part of that process of preserving the heritage and the history of what has been going on for decades and decades here is what we do with our tournaments here based out of the museum. The first one that we started was called the Red Gill Invitational as a paid homage to Sam Widden's first venture that he had here on the property, the Red Gill Fish House. If you've ever been, it's a, it's a sight to see. We have a DJ in the parking lot. We all we cook a giant barbecue meal. We normally have 25 to 30 boats fishing in the tournament and portion of our of the proceeds goes to help support the museum and also to support that history. We're making history every time we have one of these tournaments. This year we have, are adding two more tournaments to that lineup. Uh, the, the Howl at the Moons have been going on for about 16 years and have been historically based out of a different area uh, or a different part of the island but now they're going to be run here out of the Gasparilla Island Maritime Museum as additional fundraisers and additional events to help make that history that we all have known and loved for so many years. 